Hey everyone, welcome back to another vintage pen review on my channel. Though technically today we also have a vintage pencil review for you. That is right folks, today we're going to be talking about vintage combo pens. Half pen, half pencil. First off, we're going to go over a brief history of the genre. Then I'll be showing you the ones that I've got here. How they work, how they write, and generally what I think of them. Let's go over to a brief history of combo pens as a whole. The idea behind combination pens has existed for a while now. This dip pen and pencil combo is from the 1890s. Fountain pen and pencil combinations didn't see commercial success until Julius Schnell's pencil pen debuted in the late 1920s. Although the pencil pen itself failed after the great stock market crash in 1929, the idea stuck and pen makers all around the world, both large and small, started making their own combination pens in high quality and cheap low quality models. All right, now let's take a look at the fountain pen combinations that I have in my collection, starting with this Peter Pan combination. This is a tiny, tiny little pen. It's about less than three inches long. It's made out of this fun green celluloid and it has a 1.1 millimeter pencil. It also has an engraving that says Souvenir of Denver, Colorado, which I thought was super fun. And of course, in addition to the pencil, you can see there it's got a nib as well. This one in particular is stainless steel. It is gold plated and it actually writes pretty nicely. It has some tipping on there. This one is a lever filler like the other two. And I'll be showing you how that one works in just a few moments. Overall, even though it's pretty small, I can still hold it and post it, it actually becomes pretty comfortable in the hand. Next up is a Pioneer combination pen made out of this funky black and white celluloid. Like the Peter Pan, it does have a pencil on there, but what's different is the pencil actually unscrews and that's going to reveal an eraser and you can actually get some extra leads in there as well. So definitely some added functionality there. This is also a twist action pencil, which actually works really, really well. Of course, when you uncap the pen, you reveal a nib. And this one has a warranted 14 karat gold nib, which is basically like the generic 14 karat gold nib of the time. This is another lever filler, as most combination pens are, and all the ones in my collections are. Overall, this is a pretty fun pen. Last and certainly not least is this Twin Point Pen O Pencil. Like the Pioneer, it also has a removable mechanical pencil side with an eraser and some space for leads. The real star of the show here is the nib though. This particular one is made by the Moore Pen Company, which is a pretty established pen maker at the time, and it's unusual to see this on a combo pen. This is yet another lever filler, though this one feels the most solid of the three. The body is fully gold filled and is very comfortable using it posted with the pencil or without the pencil. Here's a little tutorial on how to use a lever filler, since these are all lever fillers. You're going to open the lever using your fingernail. Then you're going to place the nib and part of the section into the ink bottle. After that, all you have to do is snap the lever closed and the pen will fill with ink. Then take it out of the bottle, clean off the section, and you are good to go. Here's what's going on inside the pen as you're doing this. For the writing sample, I'm starting out with the Peter Pan combo, which has a medium-ish steel gold-plated nib. And the pencil is 1.1 millimeter HB lead. Next up is the Pioneer, again with that warranted 14 karat gold medium nib. This one is a little bit touchy. It takes a little bit to start sometimes, but as you'll see here at the end, it does have a little bit of give to it. Again, pencil is the same pretty much across. They all function great. And this one is no different. Finally, the Twin Point. This one using that super fun more nib. And this one is probably one of my favorite flexible nibs in my collection. It's super fine when you don't flex it, but when you do, you can get up to about a double broad nib width. 
and I think it's really, really, really nice. Again, especially compared next to that super crazy flex nib, the pencil is somewhat unremarkable, but definitely functional. All right, folks, now onto my opinions on combo pens as a whole. Personally, I think that they are super cool. I obviously have collected three of them now, whether on purpose or not, that's up to you. But I really like the functionality of having both a pen and a pencil in one. I use pencils for sketching generally, but having a fountain pen around to both write with and especially with this one, do a little bit of calligraphy is amazing. It's also cool to be able to, when you're drawing, have light lines in pencil and then ink over them. Uh, you can even use like a permanent ink in this and that would be the perfect combo, which I have used. However, I do see why they only lasted on the market for a short amount of time because it's a little bit gimmicky. You're not getting a lot of ink capacity out of the pen because the pen is really only the size of like a ring top pen at the time, which are tiny. And you're only getting this much lead in the pencil here. So you're kind of compromising on the functionality of both. You just have a long, a long instrument that doesn't do each thing particularly well. So it's understandable. And it's really not that much bigger of a deal to carry a pen and a pencil. This is my, I have a Waterman Korean set um, that, you know, pen and pencil. And pen and pencil combos uh, were still made. They were just very unpopular and very small batch. Whereas a set of a pen and pencil, you can still buy that to this day because it's, you know, you just put them both in your pocket. It's just not that big a deal. It's a problem that really didn't need solving. And as much as there's space in my heart for these little guys, I'm not going to be, you know, petitioning pen brands to be bringing them back anytime soon. As much fun as that would be. So overall, I think they're a fun gimmick that existed for the amount of time that it needed to exist for. I don't think they'll be sorely missed, but definitely this could be a fun thing to collect because they're not particularly expensive. This Peter Pan was a flea market find for five whole US dollars. I still need to put a sack in it for it to fill, but I'm not in a huge rush to do that. This one was a little pricier. I got this on eBay for $50. I probably shouldn't have paid that much. I thought it was a different brand. I thought it was a gold bond, which are actually pretty nicely made pens, but this one's okay. The celluloid's in decent shape, um, though there's no gold plating left on the trim. It's all brass, which is, Kind of a bummer. This one though, this is a pen that I will never sell. This is fabulous. It's super well made. The gold filling is like not thin. It's not wearing off anywhere. The nib is spectacular. And yeah, I'll, this isn't going anywhere. All right, folks, that was my video on combo pens. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, tell a friend and I hope you have a nice day. Thanks.